Hello, everybody, and welcome to Doom Drop Podcast, episode number six. We've got some hot topics to talk about today. We've got some uplifting shit to talk about. We've got some downer shit to talk about. So why don't we start with some of that uploading, uh, uplifting shit, Shun, uh, literally and figuratively. <laughs> yeah, we can, I mean, I'm happy about the yin-yang type deal, so we can do both. But yeah, you want to do the good news first? Yeah, we were really interested in discussing the latest news about Elon Musk and his plans for Mars, which is exciting stuff. Yeah, I mean, would you want to get straight into that and tell the viewers about the most recent events unfolding regarding that? Yeah, absolutely. So apparently, uh, and I'm no expert on uh, astronomy or anything like that, Mars is very close to Earth about once every two years is that right yeah it's very correct it, in fact it's so much so correct that it's actually more cost efficient to wait for that gap rather than like to launch something during like the rest of the orbit it's that much different so elon musk was uh talking about this fact and saying how in the next upcoming years the next few upcoming years there's going to be a mission to mars that will include thousands of rockets taking off every two years and sending thousands. massive supplies over to Mars. And the plan is not to do any return trips at the start, that they're going to send thousands of these massive, uh, what's called starships, is the newest rocket that they've got. They're uh, hoping that it'll be able to lift over 300 tons of material uh, up out of the gravity well <laughs> that's crazy by the way guys that's absolutely wild like usually when you're talking about like traditional rocketry you're, you're fighting over grams so having 330 tons to play with is just out of this world batshit insane and they're going to be doing orbital refueling uh you know over top of the earth and then sending all of these ships uh over to Mars, and then using those ships that were sent there to be dis disassembled, and all of the materials are going to be used to to generate a huge base, or to create a huge yeah. base on Mars that's supposedly going to hold a million people in the future. By what was the date? 2030, 2040, was it? Uh, I'm not oh, sure about that. 2037, something like that. I can't remember. Oh, okay. Got a lot of bit different dates in my head right now, but um, this well, is, yeah, this is an insane undertaking. Yeah, no, to say the least, this is like um, cosmic engineering finally like getting underway. If we can get to a point where we're transporting millions of people over years to different planetary bodies, that's, now we're talking. This is, it's not quite Starship Enterprise, like pun intended with the name, but it, you know we're getting there um like like i say in saying the, the the first generations of ships will be used purely to like recycle you know basically scrap into becoming part of the habitats that make up the colony um which is very wise um does kind of put the emphasis on the one-way trip factor though so all the people going there are probably going to be you know pioneers that don't have any intention of coming back to earth at least anytime soon and only the people going in the future will be maybe you know more touristy where the, i think the the goal is to basically get this commercially viable for the average guy in the future as well right to have like a kind of vacation to mars yeah that's what he was saying is that the the goal the future goal is to make it affordable for anyone who could save up money uh, and potentially you know take a trip to mars which would be just insane that would be so crazy uh, and it really yeah. it tickles me so much as a, a fan of uh, science fiction and, you know, we're, we're fans of Starcraft, um, mm -hmm. thinking about like an interplanetary, uh, becoming an interplanetary civilization and having, you know, Species. moon bases and, uh, you know, Mars base and spreading out through the solar system and eventually through the galaxy. It really, fe it feels like that is the way, uh, like that's the path. Do you know what I mean? Um, 
Yeah, but I also feel like there's a lot of limitations in our ability to colonize the, the solar system and by extension the galaxy by those traditional means. I, I imagine that in the future, if we do want to become like, you know, exploring the galaxy for real and actually colonizing the galaxy for real, then we you wouldn't send people. I guess you would have to send like embryos in ships in all directions to like kind of like you know become people later on and like colonize that way or maybe you'd utilize artificial intelligence and like say have like loads of drones that go out and find habitable planets and set up the habitats for the people to arrive eventually yeah that yeah, i don't know that makes sense to me um that ai would be sent out first to to set up a base um but then what if it you know decides that that it doesn't want to <laughs> let humans come and take over. It, it likes owning this planet. It's um, well, it's strange. I mean, d depending on what parameters you give the AI and what we're talking about here, like, if it's like say small nanobots and their only directive is like disassemble materials to raw form and then repurpose those raw material those the raw materials into like you know new robots that. You know, new new nanobots that keep building them that keep reproducing themselves and eventually build like habitat structures and whatnot maybe they can do that just fine without any worries about whether or not humans are going to be coming eventually or whatnot i don't know it I'm, wouldn't necessarily be a general intelligence i'm just imagining like a horror movie in my head right now <laughs> a group like of what? settlers you know flying out to a planet where an ai was sent uh, you know, hundreds of years ago to build up a, you know, small base or whatever, and they're going to land there um, and, you know, be welcomed by the AI and, you know, all this, this base be already fully construction, constructed and they arrive on the planet and it's a complete mess. Do you know what I mean? Like there's all kinds <laughs> of problems and things are falling apart and uh, yeah, the locals aren't too friendly feel, and the AI is sinister. <laughs> do you remember the film Wally? -E? Wally, -E, yeah. Do you remember, like, essentially they left the AI, well, kind of like a robots AI on the planet to kind of clean up the planet, but instead yeah. of cleaning up the planet, they essentially built skyscraper skyscrapers out of garbage. Right? <laughs> 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 that was their way of interpreting cleaning up the planet. I thought that was brilliant. I think maybe also something a bit understated and yeah, glossed over a little bit. But I thought that was hilarious writing. Yeah, that well, was pretty funny. It's a good movie. For sure. Oh, I love Molly, dude. It's one of my favorite movies. A lot of great movies about um, interplanetary travel and stuff. It just, it really does tickle me to think that we might actually be doing that in the well, future. What if, we, what if, what if we already are doing that? In, in well, we are doing that. I just want to put that out there. We yeah. are already doing that. We just aren't aware. We're not consciously aware of it. Like we're on a biological spaceship right now. That's planet Earth. And it, like, if you want to visualize how Earth is moving through space and time, it's actually wild. It's like we're like we're like revolving around a bullet that's shooting through space and time. Like we're, we're like basically like you know spiraling around the sun as the sun is shooting through the galaxy at crazy speeds. We just don't have that like sense of representation in our daily lives. Right. We already are on a biological spaceship right now. Yeah, for sure. It's uh just a really big circular spaceship. Mm hmm Yeah. Well, I'm I'm super excited. I, I don't know what all the hatred is all about for Elon. I th I feel like that's that's uh, as humanitarian a goal as any is uh, spreading out our. But I think it's partly political that as well, right? Because he's aligned himself. He's a bit of an internet troll himself, and he's aligned himself more with like the right wing ideologues more so than the leftists. So then it becomes a battle of he's not one of us, so fuck him. So now you've got half of a country like against him by default just because they're leftists. Just, just throwing that out there. Yeah, and I'm really a big. I'm a big fan of what he's doing with free speech on, on X or Twitter. Um, I think that that's the right way to go. And it, it's crazy how free speech has been de degraded over time. And I'm really glad that Pissed somebody on. is taking taking the helm a little bit for that. Let me say it how it is. Literally been pissed on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, in your country and, and in my country as well, right? Yeah. 
Now I can tell you, now my granddad would be turning in his grave if he if this is what he fought for. Right, like uh, hate speech laws and stuff are getting completely out of control right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're gonna is... go into that stuff no, later, this... right? Mm. <laughs> This is this is where things go go take a darker turn here in the podcast is uh, where I talk about uh, my country and new laws that are coming in um, to to limit people's free speech and uh, punish them for so called hate speech. It's it's kind of crazy what's been happening in Canada recently. It's a big power grab, if you ask me. Yeah, it's um it's quite frightening. So why don't we why don't we talk about it now? Um Sure. What's it's your changed? it's your and I mean it's my commonwealth, you're part of me, but it's your home country, so I think you should do the honors, but I'm mad for you, so but you should you should start things off. So here's the the bill. Um I'll bring it up for Shun as well. Yeah. Here it is. Um, it's absolutely psycho. Uh, some of the amendments to the criminal code are wild. This is the Bill C-63, and it is the first reading, so it's not 100% done yet, but this government has had a very good track record for forcing things like this through, and it's totally s sandwiched in with a bunch of stuff about terrorism and about child pornography as well. It's so, so bizarre that they're tying that together. It's one very thing. strange. Like they're they're talking a lot of the bill is about um, punishing people for uh, child sexual exploitative exploitative material. Or um, there's also some clauses about. Um, sending dms or sending direct messages uh about sexual material without informing the other or without consent from the other person so not only now is there consent laws about um you know you have to ask for consent with someone when you have sex with them now you actually have to ask for consent before you send someone a message, a sexually charged message. So think about all the so DMs that you've sent. So <laughs> hypothetically, someone could trick you and like make it seem like it's cool to send them something like that off the record. Like say hypothetically, a workmate that had it out for you could like act all friendly to you and like and like you know make like inappropriate jokes of you, and then you send them like a you know like a. A sexual meme or something to their discord or their phone or something and then they turn around and go to hr and it's like look at this fucking guy like sending me inappropriate shit mm -hmm. and this is a very serious escalation in the amount of like the the punishment for breaking these uh these laws and these uh acts or these um uh, offenses it's it's crazy look at what i've brought up here on screen everyone who committed an offense under this act or any act of parliament if the commission of the offense is motivated by hatred based on race national ethnic origin language color religion sex age mental or physical disability sexual orientation or gender identity or expression is guilty of an indictable offense and is liable to imprisonment for life this is batshit insane. So you, what you say can now get you a life sentence in prison. Just let that sink in for a moment. Every person who advocates or promotes genocide is guilty of an indictable offense and is liable to imprisonment for life. So think about the israeli conflict and what mm -hmm. advocating for either side both sides claiming genocide right so if you're advocating for israel if you're advocating for palestine both sides would consider that genocide and 
maybe the Canadian government can interpret that as genocidal as well. And so yeah. Your your free speech is being chilled. You know what I mean? It's it's a chilling effect on free speech. Everybody you, you've got to realize that these are real consequences that can come from just and this is just one big talking. slippery slope as well. This leads to all kinds of craziness down the line. Like this isn't the end. This is just setting up for more control and power and surveillance and regulation Absolutely. under the guise of humanitarianism, which is bullshit. Because if it yeah. was, if it, if, if, if the concern here was protecting children, that'd be a separate fucking issue, and it would already be done by now. Yeah, it's called the Online Harms Act, guys, and it's it's quite in, it's quite crazy. And one of the big um, things that I want to highlight is content that foments hatred would be uh, in violation of this act. So putting anything online. Um, that the government considers fomenting hatred, getting people to hate something would be considered a violation of the act, which could be, you know, making you subject to life imprisonment. It's, it's, it makes me just, actually physically ill seeing this shit in, in law. I, I just, I can't, wrap my head around on the same screen i'm seeing something about extremism and terrorism and also to do about children harming themselves and being victimized like, i think these are two completely separate issues and to package it as this one thing is like sh nothing short of disgraceful yeah it's it's similar to a lot of bills that get pushed through because they they like to wrap it up with uh, an issue that like they, there's an an underlying issue that's really uh contentious contentious and then they wrap it in something that's like untouchable do you know what i mean like talking about you know violence against children or sexual victimization or re-victimization of a survivor it's like these type of things are very hard to argue against and if you want to argue against this bill the government and media can just paint yeah. you as somebody who yeah. doesn't give a shit about these people right and the reality is i'm sure i can't speak for you saying but i'm assuming that you you would be of similar mind to me and everything as far as it pertains the safety of children we're fucking 100 percent on board with but we're not on board of that being packaged in the same ill because this other shit no it's it's inappropriate doesn't make sense and it's gonna allow the government to force through a bunch of new powers um and by the way this is mostly not about um what people are doing like the the average person who's putting the uh content out there or like who is fomenting hatred or doing something against minors, most of this is about social media services and yeah. requiring them to do a bunch of stuff and to um, make certain things inaccessible to a Canadian audience if they're deemed, you know, as like fomenting hatred or as harmful content. And this is just the slippery slope. This this will be extended in the future. So the, even though some people dissecting this might think, well, it's not too bad what they're saying here. Yeah, but later on they'll be making amendments to this and you know increasing the scope of what these terms even mean and pertain to. So definitions can get just you know shuffled around to to mean whatever you want them to. That's right. And so, um. Let's just go to harmful content here because harmful content is such a broad, ambiguous, term. ambiguous bullshit term that um, let, let's just see how they actually uh, 
define harmful content. So harmful content means intimate content communicated without consent. That's what I was talking about earlier. Content that sexually victimizes a child. Okay, that's fine. We understand that. Content that induces a child to harm themselves. Content used to bully a child, which is actually um, defined as well. Uh, it's quite a, a interesting definition. Content that foments hatred. This is the part that uh, you start to really lose loaded. me here. This is loaded yeah, and this is, loaded. this is very open. Um, content that incites violence. This is already against the law. We already have a law for this. In fact, we already have a law for this, these, I believe. These are already yeah, fully outlined in the law. G is kind of like half covered in the law already. Yes. This is already mostly covered. Um, I don't know about bullying. This is covered. This is covered in the law. So they're kind of throwing in things that are already against the law. It's to make it seem less crazy. To make Basically. it sound less crazy. To make it sound like less of a change. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's this wild. Is... Like, it's, why, it's really why is, why is this? Why is this are even in there? Is maybe they're adding the revictimize a survivor part? Maybe that's it. But this is definitely covered. Sexually victimizes a child. There's you, you, many well laws so, about this. There's many laws about this, yes. So why is it in here? It's very strange um, that they're putting, like, obviously harmful content. This is just the definition, but the content that sexually victimizes a child, this is a big part of the Online Harms Act. This is what I don't get. If the motivation behind this bill is to protect children, why mm -hmm. haven't they already done this? And why haven't they done it as a separate issue? Why have they needed to package it this way? It's... Know. I, the only motivation I can glean from that is that they're literally using kids to push their own agenda and to power grab, which is sick. It's really disgusting. Duties of operators of regulated services. This is really what the meat of the bill is, is about forcing companies to mitigate or to do extra things uh, and follow the commission which has just been established by the way there's a whole commission that's been established um a big organization in the government uh which is what this this bill will establish um to regulate the companies um and lower the amount of harmful content air quotes mm. that air quotes. canadian people are exposed to so Jesus, man. Yeah, the operator of a regulated service must implement measures that are adequate to mitigate the risk that users of the service will be exposed to harmful content. On the what service. kind of dystopian future are we headed to, man? I don't know. So anything like harmful content again, guys. Anything that foments hate uh, can be seen as bullying, right? All of the things that were in that list that we looked at before. Wait, didn't they also somewhere in here stipulate that this is all to protect people's freedom of expression as well? Which is like the most hilarious irony I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, we'll get that. We'll get to that pretty soon here. I'm um, jumping ahead here. I'm a little bit mostly charged. Yes. So uh, I'll have to find that part. But um, basically it's requiring the operator which is like facebook instagram any of these social media companies they have to start in order to actually operate in canada they need to um start removing all kinds of harm what's deemed harmful content and that can just be whatever basically whatever the government decides is considered harmful right like maybe it's somebody talking about how gender is not fluid or something like that you know maybe they they say that a man is never a woman or something um that could be considered harmful content right there, there's all Very kinds hateful. of hateful hateful content right mm. so that stuff would have to be removed and it's now or it's 
coming into law that this would be the case that the company in order to uh and there's there's a whole bunch of different fines and stuff we'll get to that a little bit later but it's in excess of 25 million dollars or eight percent of their global earnings for a year well, um, could, could be could be uh the fine for not removing that content So this this is like this is coming with serious consequences for the companies if they don't follow. So they will play ball. So they will play they ball. Will play yeah. ball. Yeah, they will play ball with this. They don't have a choice unless they got a lot of money to burn. They will play ball. That might include Twitter X as well, right? Yeah. They don't actually have percentage to... based as well, so it's like, yeah, like if you're if you're a really big company making a lot of money, it 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 burns a massive hole for you to pay these fines. There, there isn't um, the requirement to remove the content from the platform. It's just to block Canadians from seeing the content, right? It's making it inaccessible to Canadians. Is it's what they use. Yeah. National censorship. Yes. Exactly. Welcome to your Orwellian nightmare. Let me see if I can find that paragraph you were talking about. Can you can you remember some words from it? Uh, I just remembered I can't no, I can't. I remember what we were talking about it, but So freedom of expression. Just look for freedom of expression. There, there it go. is. There it is right there. So the purposes of the act to promote online safety of persons in Canada, to protect children's physical and mental health. Considering like the, the this fact that no, they no, start out with considering is already a bad yeah. sign. This 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 fucking sentence here enable persons, not even children, enable right. persons in Canada to participate fully in public discourse and exercise their freedom of expression online without being hindered by harmful content. Like this one right here. I can't not have an emotional reaction while reading this sentence. Like I'm fucking angry. The only thing that's hindering me from my freedom of expression is this act <laughs> in this government. Exactly my point. Harmful content does not hinder me from freedom of my freedom of expression, but they're giving the impression like, oh, we're helping you by we're helping yeah. you per, to to uh, express yourself um, by getting rid of this terrible it's like, content it reminds me of that like little uh, funny zen thing zen joke where it's like let me help you said the monkey to the fish as it grabbed it and put it up a tree right yeah it's it's really depressing man i hate i'm i'm so mad at canada uh, my do you, government do you, do you right know what? now this doesn't make me depressed this makes me feel vigored like like i feel like i'm, I'm energetic and angry about it but I, I, what i want people the reaction i want people to have is I, I want this to be the fire that is lit under people's asses to finally stand up and say enough is enough mitigate the risk that persons in canada will be exposed to harmful content online while respecting their freedom of expression. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's the case. Uh, do you know, do you know what's crazy? So is that if I, do, you know, do you know what's crazy? Is mm -hmm. that if I was if I was Canadian and I said that sentence that I just said there mm -hmm. after this bill went through, that could actually be flagged and said that I was trying to incite people there. Hmm. There's already you know I mean? they they do outline in here like uh, inciting violence, but that's another one of these uh, laws that is already in place. There's already plenty of law uh, surrounding inciting but this gives violence. This more broader of power, right? To like do what the fuck they want and censor who they want. But they're basically 
yeah, and they're they're adapting the criminal code to allow imprisonment for life for speech. So Which is just, fucking batshit insane, by the way. Yeah. They're just increasing the uh the scope and the punishment for how can you say you live in a democracy which is supposedly free, where words that come out your mouth can leave you let land you in life in prison? Like, are you joking? It's crazy. Yeah, it's an oxymoron, dude. It's not a democracy, my guy. It's fucking insane. Like, people fucking died for those freedoms. If if you have the audacity to throw them out the window so brazenly, God fucking help you. Yeah, it's it's disgusting as well. the The news coverage of B Bill C sixty three in Canada it's it's so tame that they're just praising it. Nobody's thinking about the consequences of this shit, like how this is a slippery slope where Pe people only these... have their own self interest in mind, so they're only thinking about you know the anxiety over like if you're a Canadian. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you, the housing market is crazy right now. So you're probably struggling just to pay your fucking rent, just to feed yourselves and shit. So people are like scared and like insecure and they got something to lose. They got families they're trying to like feed and support and they're unable to do so. Yeah, it's it's, struggle. it's psychotic right now in uh, Canada when it comes to housing. Like the the situation is is dire at the moment and the government is like n just completely like a nerf bat trying to hit this oncoming train of uh mm. just destruction in terms of the housing market this this horrible uh incoming crash they're trying to slow it down with a wiffle bat like hitting it with billions of dollars uh and no real reform at all, plus you know, five hundred thousand new immigrants, one of the most in the entire world, every single year coming into the into Canada. And Canada is not a very big place, guys. It's thirty eight million or forty million people in the in the country, something like that. Well, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but even though it's a large landmass on the map, there's a lot of uninhabitable terrain there as well. Not a lot of actual populated areas. Yeah, there's not a lot of populated areas. There's insane amounts of land though that could be opened up to new populations you know that could be okay. uh opened up to new building but the yeah. the codes and the zoning in canada are so messed up and the way that uh new buildings are uh set up and approved is so laborious and it's a bureaucratic nightmare. It's a bureaucratic nightmare, red tape everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of places, like people don't want new buildings in their area. They don't want like low income housing in their area. So they complain to their local politicians. Local politicians um, control a lot of this stuff and they force out new builders. Uh, so these houses are just not getting built and the rental prices are getting so insane. Uh, my pa where my parents live, it's a small town, small town like forty thousand people, and they have a rental property in their house that they rent. It's like a one bedroom apartment, and it's three thousand dollars per month, guys. Three thousand for a one bedroom. That's crazy, man. What? Yeah, it's insane. It's so insane. That's it. They're able to charge that though, and people will actually pay it. It's psychotic. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty wild, man. So they're they're trying to throw money at this problem like crazy. Um, uh, let let me take a look here at the uh the actual news story that I was looking at from Global News. It was um. This could be a lot of corruption and building materials as well. Yeah. Like they can get away with some really shady stuff as well and hide costs and building materials and make money disappear and stuff. So the federal government said that they're going to put $8.5 billion into housing initiatives. Mm. And I was reading about this that 
this like Canada builds directive initiative is going to be like a lot of uh, federal buildings that are going to be um, refurbished refurbished and then uh, like they're going to build apparently apartments and stuff above post offices and, and things like that in order to add more housing but if you just look at these numbers and it's it's crazy that news and government can just lie to us like this. Eight yeah, point five tell, billion tell the, uh, with the goal of building three point eight seven million homes. Guys, take out your calculator here. Let's like, put yeah, two thousand one hundred a home. Yeah. Put that in your calculator. Eight point five billion divided by three hundred or three million eight hundred and seventy thousand. $2,196 per home is what they project. It's it's crazy. Why are they why can they just lie to us like this, Shun? Like how can how can because people believe it or at least they it's not I don't think people necessarily believe it. I actually think that the, the majority of people don't believe it. It's just they're too afraid to speak up, too afraid to, you know, challenge the status quo, so to speak. They've got their own shit to worry about. And I think the system is kind of designed like that in mind, where you've got your own problems to worry about. So you're kind of like worried about your own preservation rather than like the global scope of, you know, geopolitics or something. Like it's kind of outside of your wheelhouse when you're just struggling to make ends meet and pay your fucking rent. So let's give them even the best, the best interpretation that we could possibly imagine. All right. Let's say that it's eight point five billion for housing uh per year until twenty twenty three right so how many years until twenty twenty three well it's like seven years right so we'll time this, we'll times this budget by seven that's fifty nine million or fifty nine billion dollars and let's divide that by three million eight hundred and seventy thousand homes still only fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> fifteen thousand i've never heard of a government building anything for cheaper than mm. what the private sector can do they built a, a bathroom at the beach in my hometown and it cost six hundred and seventy five thousand dollars i just i can't imagine them being able to build <laughs> Anything. Are they going to be like sheds or something? Like 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 cargo shipping containers converted into homes? Like what are we doing here? I have no idea. There's so much corruption. Just well, that's another thing that this this actually is a bedrock for corruption. Building materials and shit. Like if you want to be if you want to launder money or something, you do it through building materials. It's right. a great way of doing it. It's crazy, mind blowing. Um, this is like kind of like virtue signaling that oh yeah we're doing something about the housing crisis meanwhile they're causing the housing crisis and still bringing in 500,000 people per year 500,000 people per year that's more than 3 uh, 3 million homes that's what they're planning to build 3 million homes um 3 3,870,000 uh, homes by um 2031 There'll be more than 3 million new immigrants by then. It's crazy. It's so so silly. If if it wasn't so disgusting and sad, it would be actually hilarious that the way that their math works just doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, I, I, I don't presume to understand the logic behind it. I don't even think there is any logic behind it. I, I think it just smells of corruption to me. It reeks, man. And this this new bill reeks even worse, but that's that's me complaining about my my home country guys. That's um yeah, it's just psychotic over there right now. I, I can't go back to Canada. I I I feel for you guys who still live there. Um, you're a bit of an interesting character yourself now because you're living in a country that won't like ever fully accept you, but at the same time like probably one of the better places to live in the world at the same time so i don't know i, I kind of think like, oh it reminds me of you seen the did you seen the show shogun no i haven't oh my god watch that show there's there's one moment in that show where he's like an englishman and he kind of like you know 
get I, might, I won't say too much because I want to spoil the show, but he's an Englishman that kind of gets into the Japanese culture a little bit, mm-hmm. and he's he's kind of aware that he won't be fully accepted by the the Japanese as well. Mm-hmm. But but he also doesn't want to go back to his home eventually. So he he is like that. He's like the in a way, it's like a being like a wandering soul almost. And you but you, but you get to choose your home. You've you've chosen Japan as your home. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of cool. It's um. Uh, it's not perfect over here, guys. The the sort of like rose colored glasses of a lot of Western people when looking at Japan is it's not it's not perfect, but they're doing a few things a lot better. And one of the big things is respecting people's privacy, which I really appreciate. Like the the government is not up all in, in your business all the time. And like looking over your shoulder, there's not cameras everywhere. There's a few, but it's not so omnipresent as it is in a lot of Western countries now. And I just, I don't feel the long arm of the government all the time on my shoulder. Do you know what I mean? Whereas in Canada, I feel like, especially since COVID and all the shit that happened during that time, it feels like they're more in your life. Like Big ever. Brother or something. Yeah, they're just... The, the, under the guise of trying to help you, you know, sending you money or, like, uh, checking up on you, you know, like, the this, this, this sort of weird uh, relationship change with the government and the, the people is, is freaking me out about Canada right now. It's, it's not really... It's not really a factor in Japan. It's like the government just stays out of the way for the most part, and that's what I like a lot. Yeah. I can see that, and that's why I think it's kind of cool that you decided to, you know, lay anchor there and let that be your home of choice. I think it's cool. Oh, we'll see for how long that lasts, but, um, yeah, it's... uh. It's an interesting place to be. Also, one of the things I really love about Japan, and this is something that most people I don't think talk about, is like, uh, no matter where you go, there are historical places to see. Like a lot of people come to Japan, they go to Kyoto, Osaka, mm-hmm. um, Tokyo, and they see all the things, uh, the big temples and stuff. But what people don't realize is that those are like everywhere in the country it's doesn't really matter where you go Isn't you can always of find temples all over the place everywhere man everywhere it's crazy uh yeah so uh, i'm living here in shiga right now and went to some temples around my area where almost no tourists really visit but there's still these massive, beautiful temples that rival the ones in Kyoto and Osaka. I'd rather go to that than a touristy temple. You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather go to see what it's like when there's not like loads of people swarming it. No people at all. Like, nothing. Really, nobody was there when we were there. It was crazy. You can get like a. I would love know. to go, man. Yeah, it's, I'd love it's to go and just meditate there. You know what I mean? It really makes me wonder, like, why why don't we have things like that in, in my home country? I know that we are a much younger country and stuff like that, but um, there's because just a peace lack. Of mind and, like, well-being is not a priority in Western countries. If anything, they want the opposite. They want you, like, fearful. They want you fearfully docile. Right. But another thing is that the... Um, places that are you know historical areas in canada are controlled by the government right the government takes care of those places and they're few and far between and they're very expensive to maintain whereas the temples here in japan they are kind of independently taken care of and they just collect donations and that's how they stay afloat and like that that's that's it I mean, it's it's a it's a different methodology, and it allows for way more of these type of really nice cultural oh. places to exist. 
It's interesting you say that because that's actually how my home football club survived because they were mm. like on the brink of complete bankruptcy. Like they were in so much debt and like the only reason they even survived was because like a large portion of the supporters all like chipped in a thousand pounds each kind of thing. Mm. And that like kept the club floating and now they're like smashing it and like won the Football League one and got promoted to Champions League. Nice. It's... It 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 makes it, being here made me feel like a lack in my home country of like when you go for a hike or whatever in Canada it's it's very beautiful like the nature is there the there there's a lot of nice trails and stuff like that but there wasn't like that cultural aspect like um every everywhere I go here in Japan if I go on a hike or I you know climb a mountain or um, visit you know a lake or visit some place um there's always a temple there's always a shrine there's always like you know areas of spirituality and and uh worship everywhere you go and it's mm. it's just kind of nice it's it's cool like you go to these even though I'm not a spiritual person like I arrive at these places and I really like appreciate um, that there's something to see when you go on a hike. You know what I mean? Where you're actually like hiking up to a temple. Um, it's it's very cool. The, to, that to me sounds very appealing. I love the idea of like hiking up to a temple because then it's both the journey of the hike is is as much as beautiful as the destination. Like yeah. I, I don't know, something about that is really appealing to me. Yeah, and whereas. I mean, it's it's nice as well in Canada, but you, you're mostly just hiking for a view. Do you know what I mean? You just hike up to the top of a mountain yeah. and try to get a good view of the area. I mean, that's that's nice. It's natural, but I I I really like the uh, that addition, and I don't know why we don't build little temples uh, in our nice hiking areas or our nice um, uh, scenic areas as well. Some some place for people to come and worship. Something to see when you arrive at the top of the mountain, you know? I just don't think it's in the incentive of Western culture to cultivate any kind of spirituality or, like, well-being. Like, uh, yeah, I think, like, the closest we get to that is, like, therapy. And even that is kind of, like, geared more towards females than men. It's an unfortunate aspect, but it, it's it's cool to be here. Maybe I'll take some of these lessons back to Canada someday in the future. I don't know what's going to happen with the upcoming election this year and how things are going to change over the you know the next ten years or whatever. I feel like things have been heading in a bad direction though, and I'm I'm really not not happy with um the way things are now. But I'll vote. We'll see if things change. Well, people have accused me of you know being uh, or running away from the problems in Canada. Like, I didn't create this shit. Whoa, <laughs> I was hang bored on a minute, of this hang shit. A There's a lot of people that are quick to point the finger, mm. but I, will just, I would like to quickly say that there's plenty of people in this world that are running away by staying still. Mm. But you can run away by staying still as well. You don't have to be literally running away from problems. A lot of people are running away by staying in the same place. And that's, if, if anything, more running away. Right. Hiding from their problems or just yeah. ignoring them. Head in the sand. Head yeah. in the sand, yeah. That's, that's worse than running away, if anything. Yeah. Just not doing anything. Doing something feels better than not doing anything, for sure. What's that? What's that? I can't remember. I can't remember the exact quote, but it's something like, like what's what what's worse than an evil man is a good man that does nothing, is essentially the, mm. the message there. I think I consider it more like voting with my feet. Do you know what I mean? Like Yeah, me too. I do I'm, that a lot more in life in general. Yeah. I'm or people will say like oh, if you want things to change at your grocery store, you want you know, different things to be available, you just have to put your money where your mouth is, right? And like buy the things oh. or don't buy from certain producers to get them to change. And the same thing yeah. I think is with government. Like I don't like what you're doing you don't get my tax money anymore. I'm moving, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think that that, that would have a, a, a more knock-on effect if people did that more. Mm. You can still vote from abroad, but you're not going to 
pay into the the tax of this government that's you know fretting away money like crazy uh, yeah. on programs that are you know not stopping the problem at the same time you know promoting an even worse situation in terms of housing and all this free speech law i do i just i i really am stuck on this this topic and i, I wish that i could just <laughs> you know do you know move I, away from sometimes it, but, I, yeah. sometimes i wonder if it's like a matter of like the matrix has us and it's like trying to get its tendrils in by making us care about these topics and it's like keeping you distracted from like actually like figuring things out they want to like get you mad and frustrated and thinking about these kinds of topics so you're not actually worried about anything else going on in the world it makes me feel like i'm in a simulation when i see everybody else in the me like the entire media establishment praising shit that's obviously bad for you know, yeah. free speech and like championing it uh, as like a, a protection of free speech. And I'm like, I'm my... am I the only one who's not an NPC here? Like, what the fuck is going yeah, on? Yeah. No, you're not, you're not wrong for being like, what the fuck? And I think that there, I don't, I don't necessarily think people are literally NPCs. And I don't necessarily think that we literally live in the matrix, but I do think that. If all intents and purposes, we can think of it in that way. It does really feel like a lot of the the world's population is essentially asleep to these issues, and uh, they do kind of appear to be NPCs, or at least we we are treated as if we are NPCs by how batshit insane some of this shit that tries to appeal to us. So, uh, but personally, I'm starting to think more and more that we are in some kind of simulation because it's it's kind of so bizarre that it it has to be that way. Like I'm starting to side with Elon when he says like the chances that we are in base reality is more like one in billions. I'm starting to think that maybe he was onto something. I don't know. So tell me about the simulation, Shun. Well, I've actually done some psilocybin trips recently where I'm not, I'm not sure how much I should talk about, but I had things in the trip basically tell me not to talk about certain things and i was in defiance of that and i was like no no, no i'm having not having any of it anymore like I'm, I'm done with letting that kind of like evil energy in the world exist without me doing anything about it so to speak and it was like i had this alliance of entities trying to calm me down and i said okay i'll, I'll, I'll sit here and listen to your reasoning I'll try and hear you out and like give you a chance to like make your case of why I shouldn't do anything about this. And they made their case to me. I listened and I tried to like see it from their point of view as many ways as I could. And I couldn't, I couldn't agree with it. And eventually it got to the point where I was like, nah, I'm not having it anymore. And I, I, I kind of like decided to like align myself against the things in the world that, I've now kind of deemed hostile, I guess, for lack of a better word. Well, there's a lot to unpack there, but um, what are the hostile things that you're talking about? Well, I don't, I don't presume to like understand it fully, but they were like manifesting as like, for lack of better words, interdimensional aliens and demons, right? But those could be like, I guess, like metaphorical uh, aliens and demons, just how my mind was perceiving them to make sense of what I was seeing. But they could literally just be like, who, who knows, just like maybe like negative entities in the universe or something. I have no idea. And what was the thing that you felt you needed to do something about? Well, I feel like how to put this into human words, I don't know, but I feel like we we as a species are fighting for our own existence. And I feel like humanity could go in many different directions. And if we carry on the path we are on right now, it's one of destruction and I'm not sure how I, I can talk about this in, in any way that doesn't make me seem crazy or like talking shit or something. This is it's not like something easy to unpack here. Maybe you got to ask me more 
specific <laughs> questions. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's been uh, people throughout the ages who've had the same feeling as you, right? That we're on the path to destruction. Um, there's been good things that have come out of that, and there's been bad things that have come out of that. Um, what? I mean, there's people who in today, like right now, who believe that we're on a uh, path to population crisis, like we're gonna have way too many people, um, that can't but be sustained also, by the planet. But, but isn't there also the opposite argument of there's not going to be enough people to replace the generations that die out and retire? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's people who are of the mind that we are on a collision course with global warming and like everything is gonna fall apart. The world is going to be destroyed because of the rising temperature. And well, I don't want to scare anyone, but in my experiences, that was the vibe I got that we were in trouble on more in more ways than one. That was the vibe you got from the, the psilocybin experience, that we're out of yeah. sync with nature uh, and nature is going to smack us down? Mother Nature's pretty angry at us, yeah, if I interpreted it correctly. But I also think that we're not as weak and feeble as we think we are. And I think that we have way more power individually than we give us, individually and as a collective, that we give ourselves credit for. Mm. I'm not just talking about like a strength in numbers type thing, like we the people. I'm also talking about it in terms of like you as an individual are far more capable than you are aware. And I, f I also feel like our bodies are, in a metaphorical sense, instruments we've forgotten how to play. So how are you taking action there, Shun? <laughs> I've been uh, doing a lot of walking meditation deep in thought. Like today, I, pre I think I walked for about three or four hours just like listening to music or deep in thought, contemplating things. And I've, I've learned from studying... Uh, Japanese culture and uh, by extension um, Zen Buddhism, Shinto Buddhism um, that like you have three hearts you have like the heart you show the world the heart you show your closest friends and the heart that you keep secret only for yourself kind of thing so there's, there's some things I'm going to keep close to my chest for now about what I'm exactly doing if you know what I mean mm. Yeah, that that's interesting. Three hearts. I, I've been thinking about this a lot recently. I wonder if you um, will agree with me on this or not. But uh, thinking about discipline, because I'm on my own kind of discipline journey right now, trying to get myself back yeah. into shape and uh, really working on on YouTube and and being more creative and and getting longer states of that creative flow time. Like I'm really trying to maximize how much time I, I can spend on, uh, you know, creative endeavors. So um, I've been thinking about it this way a lot lately is that you have, you basically have two minds, um, like the higher mind and the lower mind or the brain. Um, that's mm. how I, I was thinking about it. And that, um, a lot of times people will say that discipline is about doing something that you don't want to do. You know what I mean? Or something that you don't, you don't like to do or you don't want to do. But uh, I feel like there's two different wants, right? There's the higher brain want. Um, you know, yeah. maybe you're, you look at yourself in the mirror uh, and you know what's best for yourself, you know, or you know what you should do. Uh, you should get out there and, go for a run or you should you know do more exercise or you shouldn't eat um candy or whatever it is right or you you should cook for yourself more right but then so is the lower brain the ego um the lower brain the lower brain is like the the uh in the moment what's best for you do you know what i mean it's like the the um the, the brain that's them. the brain that's tasked with keeping you alive. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the brain that when you get to the door with your your shoes on, 
says, oh, your legs are tired. Uh, oh, you, it's, you know, it's raining outside. Uh, you might get sick. Um, you know, the, the brain that tells you that you don't want to do what you actually want to do, you know? Um, do you know what's really strange about that? Mm. The first higher brain pertains to long-term success yes. and forth and forth and forth for thinking. However, the second one pertains to like instant gratification and what serves you now. Yeah. However, if the, if you, but it, to exist in the now, I think is correct. So I, I don't know what the, how you find the balance between those two. Cause in a way I feel like you need both. You need to be able to, be in the moment all the time, be in the infinite now, but also have that forethought of planning for the future and knowing what's best for you over long term. Well, maybe what the goal is is to bring the higher mind into the present tense. Do you know what I mean? Is that's like, what I think? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think there's somehow you have to do both. You have to be able to have that higher mind in the now. You have to be able to like. You have to make sure that the brain is, and the lower mind is subservient Tuned. to the higher mind you know that, yeah maybe there's a lack of alignment and you have to somehow through meditation or other means bring that into alignment through well, action i I'd imagine through action actually not necessarily through meditation but through action i think that discipline and your ability to uh you know silence the lower mind um and and achieve the the values the goals of the higher mind i think is an exercise similar to lifting weights and like training mm. your muscles it's a muscle that needs to be taken care of and exercised and stretched and yeah. uh, slowly build up that strength um over time and uh the you know the weaker that discipline is the harder it's going to be for you to do basically anything in life uh, to a high degree, you know what I mean? To get anything done. And the stronger it is, the more success that you'll find and the, the, the easier it is for you to overcome troubles, difficulties, and to become successful. I'm not sure what the answer is as far as like how you would best balance that because, like, the Zen Buddhist in me, I'm, I'm, I'm all about like being in the moment, and whereas you're more coming from at this from a Stoic's point of view mm. with how you're tackling these challenges, and I don't think either are right or wrong per se. Um, I sometimes worry that we as humans get in our own way too much and it, it feels like a bit of a paradox to both you have to like be spontaneous you have to like be spontaneous about certain actions while still being able to have the foresight of what's good for you over a long term I don't, I don't know if i think there's a lot of paradoxical thinking that we have to figure out as humans to to, to become in alignment with that higher self right um the the lower mind or what david goggins would call like the inner bitch or like the <laughs> you know the the whining complaining david mind. goggins man can we can we can we have a hot take about david goggins just for the fun the fun of it go ahead like no one is running away from his problems more than that guy he's like the the goku of running away from your problems you know what i mean really What's his problem that he's running away from? Well, what is he accomplishing? What's he training for? Uh, I, have, I have no idea. I don't really follow him that close. Yeah, but that's must be kind of my point. He used to be a Navy SEAL, right? And I mean, I don't know loads about him, but I know enough to know that he kind of did avoid active duty and like under the guise of like heart problems and stuff. Yet the guy is like out there, like running like a psycho, saying "stay hard" and shit. Or well, why weren't you staying hard when you were a Navy SEAL and like letting your comrades in arms die while you like you know avoided duty? So I don't know. I I see a lot of hypocrisy in his messages, and mm -hmm. I also feel like he's literally running away from his problems. I mean, not figuratively, literally running away, and like he's spending his entire time 
exercising and like i think exercise is great but i also don't think you should go from being a heroin addict to like psychotically exercising eight hours a day i think you're just you're still an addict you're just replacing it with something else you know what i mean like he is essentially a crack addict it's just he's not addicted to crack he certainly isn't a good example of balance is much you more see what i'm of saying is much more of a like a motivator for and he people who can't get I, off the couch you know yeah no i, I get that but Again, I don't think that is a good motivator for people trying to get off the couch because I think to get someone off the couch, you need to give them something sustainable. And what he's doing is not sustainable for most people. Mm. If anything, it's just like, oh, look what I can do. It's the equivalent of like going to learn guitar from someone that's just going to play some really intense solos for a very long time and make it seem like, it, you know what I mean? Like it just, that's not how you teach someone how to do anything. Right. But it's it can be how you inspire somebody to what's Maybe. possible. Right? There's, there's an argument for that. That's for damn sure that you could argue in terms of like inspiration and whatnot. But I don't know how many people would be inspired by that. Like I, I, I imagine there'd be a lot of people that'd be sitting on their couches looking at that, thinking, "Well, I can't do that. I'm not even going to fucking try." Mm, maybe. Maybe he has a interesting story. I didn't. I didn't hear the part about him like avoiding military service. I don't know. Um, the whole story, not like a huge David Goggins fan. I like the memes. Some of them are pretty funny. Yeah. Don't get me um, wrong. I don't. I don't think he's a bad guy or anything. It's just that I. I do think there's a lot of hypocrisy in the underlying message, and also, I do think that that you need to have some kind of fucking balance. Like he. He's still being a psycho addict he's just addicted to exercise right addicted to running or he's, he's still i still think yeah. it's unhealthy and i also think it comes from a place of ego i don't think it comes from a healthy i don't think he's he's happy i don't think it's coming from a secure place i don't get the vibe of like this guy's really secure in himself i get the mm. opposite i get i get a guy that's trying to compensate way too fucking hard trying to prove himself constantly way too much way mm. too much mm, yeah maybe it's um that's an interesting take what were we what were we talking about before we went on the Go david goggins take well i was before the bio break earlier i was talking about the simulation theory and how like e what elon musk was saying about the the odds that we're in base reality is like one in billions is actually like starting to make a lot more sense to me right we were talking about um discipline and like the higher mind and the lower oh, mind. After that, yeah, right. yeah, um, yeah. It, th this type of thinking is kind of helping me a little bit to to get myself um, through some of the harder points. Like just just kind of recognizing that there is the difference between the two minds, and then you know when I'm waking up in the morning, um, I'm thinking like oh, I don't want to run today, and and then I, just, I kind of realize like, oh, that's that's my lower mind, right? I actually do want to mm. run because when I was yeah. writing my schedule and when I was, you know, planning for my future and how I want to feel and how I want to be in the future, I I said explicitly that I want to run in the morning at this time. Well, and so... <laughs> this, is, this is the strange paradox of the human condition because like the cure for depression is exercise but mm. depression stops you from being motivated to exercise but the way to build motivation and energy to exercise is through exercise it's like right. a paradox but but you have you the human have to break that chain have mm. to actually you know put your shoes on and go to the door and walk out of it so to speak literally both figuratively and literally so it's the higher mind that gets you to that door, right? To get you to get out there. But you get closed off to that higher mind, right? If you get like caught in that depressive cycle, it's hard. You're, you're then, then you're in service of the ego, which is of the lower mind, and you get trapped in that brutal cycle, right? Right. And we're all guilty of it. I've had, I've had days where I've literally just been like sat on the sofa or laying on the sofa watching a TV show or something. And I, I want to go out for a walk, but I don't want to go out for a walk. You know what I mean? And eventually I push myself to actually go out for the walk and I feel amazing when I am on the walk. And same thing with having a shower. I think, I think people with ADHD and stuff, they have that issue where it's like they go, they, they, they really don't want to go have a shower or rather like they don't want to actually do make the effort of going to have the shower. But once they're in the shower, they fucking love it. 
It's just mm-hmm. the actual mental processing of having the shower is taxing. But once they're in there, they love it. Right. There's a lot of people who are fully in service to the lower mind. They're barely making any concessions to the higher mind at all. It's uh, it's sad. It's tough. It's tough to to force supersedence of the higher mind. But like I said, it's it's a muscle. It's something that has to be built. People try to do things um, a lot of times a little bit too quickly. Like they try to jump on uh, a little bit of motivation that they get. You know, they get a spring of motivation and mm-hmm. they start a challenge or they start something um, that their muscle, like their motivation or their discipline muscle is just not ready to sustain, you know, and they end up failing. Well, um and then there's yeah there's something else there that's an uh, issue circling back to what we were just talking about with the david goggins and motivational stuff it's like motivational porn and people are kind of like kidding themselves when because when a lot of times when you consume that content you can get a motivational hit but you're spending that motivation consuming that motivational content you know what i mean like all that like feel good that you're feeling while watching that content is being flushed away consuming that content essentially mm, that's yeah get when you guys get it's that motivation hit, anybody who's out there listening something. anybody who's out there listening if you get a hit of motivation and you feel really motivated that's a gift like that you need to take advantage of that to 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 sort of train your discipline because those motivational spikes they're not going to come around every every day and in order to improve your life and and to to become better to become more healthy or whatever your goal is you have to utilize the motivation to create healthy habits or good habits that are going to get you towards yeah. your goal and those those habits and that like time when you're motivated it has to like increase that muscle you have to use utilize that time to like to work out those muscles and to get yourself more disciplined because motivation will go away like it feels yeah. like it's going to stick around forever like now i'm motivated i'm going to do this thing but you actually have to set yourself up long term so that discipline can take over when motivation leaves it comes in waves and you got to be like a surfer. You got to be prepared to ride those waves when they're there and also build up that confidence. It, so during that wave, get some shit in motion. To, Cause then if you actually take action when you're motivated and you get shit done, even when you're not motivated, you've still got that inner truth that you, you got some shit done. You've, you've got that momentum going. So you can then ride the wave of your own momentum. Even if there's not a actual wave of motivation hitting you and helping you go, you still can build your own momentum, build your own waves, but you have to get that going whilst you're in that pocket of motivation. Don't just be a motivational junkie that goes and consumes that content, gets your hit of dopamine and then fucks off for the rest of the day. Cause what the fuck is that doing for anyone? A lot of people think about um, discipline as like a limited resource as well. Like, uh, you know, if I use all my mental discipline on this thing, then I don't have any mental discipline for this other thing, you know, like, Oh, I'm, you know, working really hard. I don't have energy. I don't have like the the mental discipline for, you know, exercise or, um, you know, eating healthily. You have more energy. You have more energy if you did exercise and worked. Yeah. There's a lot of people that like do crazy hard jobs that are really labor intensive. They, they work out while they're not at the job. So the job is easier and they can flow through it easier. And anyone who goes to the gym knows that the more energy you use, the more you have. And it's the same with discipline as well. It's like a, it's like a universal law. Like the more you give, the more you have. It's kind of bizarre that it works that way, but it does. Yeah. So I've been on this, this bit of a discipline journey recently. Um, I've gone through it a few times, but, uh, in the past year or so, I had a, a lot of, uh, downtime, uh, especially after my accident, getting hit by a car in Mexico, and a lot of pain from the the broken bones that came with that, and uh, the different like the healing process and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of it just excuses 
that uh, stopped me from doing more exercise. And now I'm feeling like I'm finally hitting that motivational wave once again and uh, building up that discipline strength that yeah. I've been lacking here recently. But um, yeah, it's... It's exactly as you said. You have to ride that wave. You have to get that momentum. And adding on to what you were just saying about making excuses, like there's a thousand and one reasons to not do anything and maybe only one reason to do it. It's up to you if you, you not, not you saying, but you, anyone. Like it's up to you if you, you make the, the excuse. There's, you can always justify it to yourself why you're not going to do something. That's easy. That's the easy part making up excuses for yourself anyone can be a victim and, and and some people are dealt like horrific cards in life and it's fucked up but you can't do anything about it just just play whatever cards you have got to the best of your ability and don't bitch about it it's a tough it's a tough um prospect but yeah i agree it's hard not to to complain about your but at the prospects. same time, but that but that doesn't motivate anyone around you, does it? No. Like, do you think it? Do you think it really helps your community to just moan amongst each other? No. Do you think that's really inspiring to each other? Well, what I want to hear is I, I want to hear that a single mum is struggling, but she's still motivated to do the best by her kid, and she's not going to sit there and piss and moan about. Like the fact that she's got a deadbeat dad that's not like giving her child maintenance or something. She's not focusing on that. She's focusing on the fact that she's got a beautiful child. She's going to do anything in her power to make that kid's life as best as it can be. You know what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. Yeah. It's, um, it's difficult not to complain. I feel like it's a, it's an ego thing, right? As well. To start complaining is like things should be better. Than they are. But it comes from a place of entitlement. It comes mm. from a place of entitlement, and actually comes from a place of feeling that you're better than someone else. Right. But what you think, you really think that you're so much better than someone else that you deserve better than what you got right now. Maybe you you aren't worthy of better right now, and maybe the fact that you think that you should get it handed to you on a plate is the exact reason why your life is shit right now because you're not actually doing anything about it. You're not taking action. And how shit really is your life? Probably not nearly as shit as it could be. Yeah, but the only reason it is shit <laughs> is because you've got your priorities mixed up and you think that you need a bunch of shit that you don't actually need to be happy or something. The only reason why you think that your life is shit is because your expectations are out of whack. Yeah. In fact, there's, there's probably a lot of people's lives are like being considered shitty when really they're like relatively amazing lives compared to what other people are having to endure right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. There's some fucking piss poor conditions out there. Just adjust people your... People got nothing to complain about. Adjust your expectations for what your life is supposed to be. My my expectations have already been exceeded just because I've got like a fucking shower and like some clean clothes to wear and like some half decent foods and like and running water and like pretty fresh air to breathe. Like my expectations are already far exceeded. Absolutely. I I have got nothing to complain about. I'm very lucky. I think a lot of people are lucky out there, but it's crazy how many people who are insanely lucky end up, you know, taking their own lives or you know, doing some dramatic shit to try and change their situation when yeah. it really wasn't that bad to begin with. The only thing I care to piss and moan about is people that piss and moan, ironically. It is a bit ironic. Mm -hmm. I'm self-aware, somewhat, somewhat. All right. Have you got any other topics you want to talk about here, Sean? I mean... In, in, well, I could talk about anything, but I didn't have like a specific agenda planned today. We're kind of like free balling it a little bit. Oh, I think we can let it lie. Let's uh, let's wrap up the podcast for today. I've got some other things I want to work on, and I'm feeling sure. I'm I'm feeling uh, particularly motivated now after talking about this with you. 
<laughs> Good man. Well, me too. I mean, um, sometimes I get into a, a, a state where I'm like, go, 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 and like I won't even sleep, and I'll like I'll strategize and get up to all kinds of things that I w- will not necessarily disclose. I've got some uh, projects on the go right now that I definitely need to get out. You know, I set myself a goal for this year, which was uh, I make feature videos as well, sometimes on my channel, things about like Flash mm-hmm. or about, uh, you know, StarCraft 2, StarCraft 1, that type of stuff. Um, and I plan to make a video every month in 2024. And it's May, and yeah. I haven't made even a single one of them, so I'm pretty uh, pretty far behind right now. Um, Pound schedule. That I think that's mostly from streaming as well. I've been streaming all the time and making videos. I know you're putting out YouTube shorts as well, even. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're starting to make some moves. I know um, it's your YouTube shorts. Yeah, but I'm... Um, I'm missing the, the mark on, on the... The videos, I think, are probably the most effective at bringing in new. Uh, well, you viewers. need you know the you you know the thing, like the the dance all day edit we did with uh-huh. the probes. That's the kind of thing maybe you're going to bring in newer people. You know, like the things that are more transformative rather than just like raw like mm. footage or whatever. Yeah. Well, the I think the feature videos make a big difference too. I. I made a huge amount of subscribers from some of those um and uh you know a lot of new viewers but i think um i'm gonna ride this wave here and try to start pumping out those videos a little bit more yeah i was i was definitely putting out more uh 2023 i had quite a few but i don't know if you want me to say uh-huh. this on air but you were telling me i'm going to try and clue you so you can say it if you don't want me to say it, but you were telling me about one of your recent processes of making videos and what you were doing recently to be quality over quantity do you know what i'm talking about oh sure yeah no i'm trying to imp- improve the quality the, the overall quality of the cast specifically um but do you want to talk about the exact process you're doing sure just just watching and actually casting like multiple multiple games per day and then just picking the best one out of the group yeah um it's a lot more effort it's a lot more um additional time that goes into it which is something i'm struggling with is the amount of time because i also need time to to relax and and to be with my wife and to Mm -hmm. spend time but um, how's that been going finding that balance it's been a lot more like rest and relaxation than i want it to be so i'm trying to like improve the amount of time that i'm uh actually working on my like i'm saying like discipline to actually have good up time or you know good focus time um well have you do you have you you i know you've been like doing a bit more scheduling recently and trying to like pen things in more have you tried like actually like penning in time dedicated for that a little bit but i haven't i have i i a little bit but i haven't been able to follow it very carefully except for a streaming schedule like i've been doing Mm. the same streaming schedule um i've penned down times for making videos but i've kind of fallen outside those line lines quite a bit I don't know. It's well, it's something to work on. Well, following a streaming schedule would be really good for drawing in people because if you stick to a schedule and you know right. people can see you reliably online, they know when to look for you. Then that's going to bring in a lot of viewers. Yeah, there's just um, the problem with that is the other things that are more important take precedence. Again, a bit lacking yeah like um yeah like kcm is is not always when it's supposed to be on um which changes up my stream schedule and like um Mm. yeah yeah uh of course the podcast as well well the Um, only thing i could think you could do about that is like say find the aggregate of when kcm would be available so like say even if it is available on the wednesday we still always do it on the thursday or however we'd want to do it so that you can like 
make the schedule more linear that way by like always doing it on a set day that it's usually ready by kind of thing. Right. That'd be the only other solution. I could also stream a little bit less and make sure that they're all days that I can definitely stream. Do you know what I mean? Oh, okay. Like I could, I yeah. could definitely stream Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday because those are days that are not going to be taken over by either a podcast or a KCM episode, right? So, mm. um, and then you know I don't have to stream instead of streaming like five days per week and then having KCM on another day and uh podcast on a different day. I could just stream like three days per week and I know that I'm going to be streaming those three days 100%. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I'm. It's all a work in progress, man. And As um, it should be. That's all any of this is. Our podcast, our KCM. Yeah, it'll be a forever um, work in progress. Podcasts. Yeah, everything is, everything is just um, a work in progress. But that's what we all are. Guys. Change is the only constant sound. Keep working on yourselves. Keep improving. Keep Don't changing. ever give up. I think that's a good place to end. Thanks for joining me, Shun. Yeah. Thanks for being here, man. My pleasure. Thanks to all of you guys who are listening and watching at home. Yeah, we appreciate you guys. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks, guys.